Let's see if we can make ourselves a sine wave using Vasari this morning. Let's see. So we've got a new mass family, and I'm going to make a humble point, and I'm going to put it on level one. And I'm going to select it, and I'm going to turn on its reference planes, just because it's easier to see. And I'm going to align it to <clears throat> one of my reference planes here. And I'm going to give it XY coordinates, because that's what you need for a sine wave. I've gone on to the helpful interweb and found myself the simplest version of a sine formula that I can which is you've got a Y and you've got an X and it's mediated by a sine formula or a, just the sine function. So I'm going to want to have this point move up and down and up and down and up and down as it goes through here and makes a sine wave. So that means I need to give it an X and Y component. So I'm going to do an aligned dimension. And the first one I'm going to do here is like that. And I'm going to call that my X. I'll make it an instance parameter. And I'm going to give this one a slightly different Y. I could do it where you know, I do a aligned dimension, like so. But the problem with that is that this point is going to want to eventually dip below zero. And these aligned dimensions really don't like going into the zero range. So I'm going to take that guy, and I'm going to give it an offset parameter. And I'm going to call that Y. And the difference with an offset parameter from over here is it just tells this point how far it is off of its hosting work plane, which is this. So it can be negative and it can be positive. It's just one of the nice little tricks. So now I have my X and my Y. And, you know, it's pretty basic stuff there. So what I need now is I need a formula. I need something that's going to define basically Y's movement in relationship to X. Now the problem is if I just jump right in here and go sine X like that, the problem is, is that Revit's going to be trying to process this with X being a foot measurement. And it needs actually a degree measurement to evaluate x. So what I need to do is I need to do a little conversion. So I'm going to add myself a angular uh, parameter like that. And this is going to be called, I'm going to call this big x. I don't know if this is great naming, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. And x, which is an angular dimension, is going to be x divided by one foot. So that's going to just make it a, basically a number, right? And which is going to be x divided by one foot would just be 21. Now I need to make it into a dimension, so I'm going to go over to my handy dandy character map, and I'm going to copy the degree thing, because I can never remember what the keystroke is for it. And I'm going to multiply that by one degree. So now I have degrees. 21, 21. So now y can be sine of x. Oh, but I still get into consistent units, because while this is working properly, it needs to be turned back into feet. So I can go by times one foot. I think that that should do it. Now I get a very, very, very small number because this is basically going to just be uh, a fraction between zero and one, uh, zero and negative one, actually. So what I want to do is I want to beef up Y so it gets a little bit bigger. So rather than multiply it by one foot, I'm going to multiply it by, let's see what 10 feet does. Yeah, I could even do more. I'll do it by 50 feet. And now I've got something driving my y direction and my x direction. And just so that I can start seeing this a little bit easier, I'm going to add myself a little controller here, which is going to look a lot like what I've already made. 
I've got my reference point lines on, uh, my reference planes on, and I've got a dimension, and I'm going to hook up my dimension to the same X dimension. So now basically I just have something that can control where I am in X land, and Y can become a result of that. So I can go up and down, and so I therefore have my sine wave being shown by the movement of that point. Now I'd like to make it a little bit closer together. Um, so what that is is actually just increasing the frequency of that sine wave. And I could get that by just um, mul multiplying x so that um, it basically just makes the sine wave a little bit tighter. So I could go sine x, and I think this is right again, by 4, four times x is going to give me a different result. And I can go and test that and make sure that it's actually doing what I want. Yeah, so now it's going up and down and up and down a little bit faster. I can also go back in and make that frequency another variable. So I can add a number variable, and I can call it frequency. Make it an instance parameter as well. And rather than have a 4, I can just make this 4, and I can call this frequency. And then I can just manipulate this number, and it'll percolate up through the rest of my formula. So now I can go back and see what's going on with this. Boing, 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 boing. It gets very fast and very excited as that frequency increases. So let me tone that down a little bit. Go back down to something like 5. And you can just start playing around with this now. Now I just have something that reads out this formula. You can actually use it to just sort of understand your formulas too. So I could go back in and I could change sine to cosine. See what that does. It's going to be pretty similar. It's just going to start halfway through the waveform here at zero. Fairly similar stuff. Um, never really understood tangents. So it's, let's see, what happens if I put in tangent, tan, oh, not tam, tan. And Tan goes in really weird places. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay, right here it goes. So I'm starting at zero. Let me zoom out a little bit. And off it goes, and then it comes back up from the bottom. You can graph how that works, too. And uh, you can do other things with these things, like, you know, I'll go back to my sine wave. But you can also then make it always stay in the positive range by using other functions like absolute value, which makes everything a positive number. And now we get the follow the bouncing ball effect. Boing, 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 boing. Anyway, so that is a little fun with math with Revit parameters and points.